a nice breeze blowing. My name's Rowan Holtkamp and we're about to set up a hang glider called an F2-190. Okay, so we've chosen to set up in the flat configuration now because we've got quite a bit of breeze prevailing. It's probably blowing about 10 or 12 knots. So we're going to set the glider up with the nose into the wind and flat. So we've undone the zip, taken the straps off, and this is the battens. I'll put them down here at the back of the glider, so I only have to move them once. This is the base bar for this glider. It's a speed bar, and it's got wheels nicely attached. They're attached with a pit pin. You can see you push that pin in there grab the handle of the pin and pulls it out. This pushing of the button retracts the balls here. You can see those little balls when you put your pin, pin in, those balls retract and allows the pin to pull in and out of a tight fit hole. Taking the pack up gear off the control frame here. This protects the sail from travel damage. So when you've got this on your car, you don't want to have these pieces of metal here rubbing on the sail and making holes in the sail. Remember where that goes for when we pack up. So we'll just make sure that the wires are free of entanglement. This A-frame as you can see the control frame here has got no wires through the inside of the control frame so that's set up correctly yep. so if I put this pin in one on the other side like that and you can see you can't pull them back out until you push that button in now I'm going to lay the control frame down I should point out too that the control frame has the bend in the bar going forwards. That's, that's called a speed bar. Next step is to roll over the glider. I'll roll the glider over and pick it up by the bag, grab the base bar, hold the base bar to the glider and flip it over so the wires are free place it down. That's the best place to do that from here because you can control the A-frame without that flopping around and getting damaged. We'll take the bag off now. I'll just roll that up like so. Nice quick easy way to roll it up. And you can see I put the bag in here like this. Makes a nice neat package. It's got the label of on the glider sitting there so you don't get it mixed up with everyone else's equipment if you're setting up on the site with heaps of people. This bit of pack up bag here was for the control frame prior to it having wheels fit on it but now this is just a spare piece of pack up gear I'll put these in here so they don't blow away down the paddock next thing I'm going to do is spread the wings doesn't take much effort at all little finger in the bag like so you can see how little effort it takes to spread the wings
then without standing on any of the wires I come to the center here and grab this and see how this ring was clipped onto there and that was clipped onto the edge of the sail that's the correct way to stow the hang glider on these parts of the hang glider so it doesn't get tangled up it makes it easier to set up too because I can now I can pull on this wire here the king post stands up get the luff lines there's no kinks or frays or tangles and clip them onto that there right now it's ready to go you can see this glider's had a little bit of a bit of time in salt air you can see little rust spots on the sail it's indicative and you can see there's a slight bit of greenness on the on the swages here a bit green so this has had some salty air time on it you should always keep your glider free of salt spray and, yeah, and these, these luff lines are being screwed up pretty tightly too you can see there's quite a few little kinks in them and there's actually a little bit of a fray just just here you can feel a thread there and there's another one there oh there's a few actually they'll need new luff lines on this glider all right so we've got a bit of um, pack up gear this one looks like a stubby holder and that's what we call it looks like a stubby holder it just so happens to be about the right size too but this goes around this bit of gear here when you pack up the glider it's designed to protect the sail when you're packed up so you don't get holes chewed in the sail when it's vibrating and rattling on, on the top of your car so that goes there and this is this little buddy here this is, protects the sail also from dirt and stuff that gathers on this end of the keel which sometimes we park the glider on we'll show you that later on I'll put that there and I'll throw that over into the into the pack up bag all right now next thing I've got the glider spread the wings spread and you can see the sails nice slightly loose which is the prime situation for us to start inserting some battens and there'll be battens here red ones and green ones and if you remember if you want to remember it all the short words between left and right red and greed and port and starboard all the short words go together any red port left <laughs> so the green ones can go on the right you can see the different lengths because the wing has a taper to it I just put all the nose of the battens together like so and I just shuffle my hands back the shortest one drops out the next one drops out the next one drops out etc etc and we've just doled out the battens no need for numbers or anything like that they're all different lengths so to get the battens in the sail I might want to come around here too sure to get the battens in the sail you can see the batten pocket there put the nose of the batten in there and hold a little bit of tension push the batten in hold the batten with one hand grab right back with the other hand and push it in one or two pushes like that and have your hand against the back there so it seats all the way home we'll lock them in a bit later I'll show you how to do that a bit later So I put them into the last luff line here for the moment. I'll do the same on the other side.
So this side's done to the last luff line. Sometimes you find the battens don't want to go all the way in. That's okay. You don't have to force them. You give it a bit of a shake. But later on, once I've done the tension up, you'll find they'll just fall in. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the tension on the sail on this bungee strap here. There's a little little handle, excuse me, little handle on the end. You pull on that handle. You can see it's sort of starting to spread the wings on the glider. Very similar to the way an umbrella is set up. Now there's a bit of a restriction here, movement. So something's caught on the crossbars there. I'm, most, I'm guessing it's a tow bridle attachment or something's caught underneath. We'll have a look. Could be a tussock of grass. So yeah, it's an aero tow bridle attachment point. It's just caught here. Guy hasn't done a great job of fitting that in. Did you see that all right? Let's see now. So there shouldn't be any particularly strong efforts required to set up a hang glider. You can see that's quite an easy job. There, just pull that back, and that clips in here. You can see it's a spring-loaded pin. And this shackle, so I'll just show you that again. So this shackle comes back and pushes that pin down, click. So it's spring-loaded, and this can't come out uh, when you're flying or, or handling the glider. Next, this one comes along, and this ring here goes straight through that clip again. You can see how quickly it just clips in there. I'll show you that again. That's it. Nice and quick and easy to use. Next thing I'll do is I'll put the rest of the battens in. There's three battens on the wing tip. Got some dive sticks here too. The dive stick goes in a little alloy thing. It's got a bungee cord inside it. Then it just goes there. You get it roughly in the right position. And it just zaps in all by itself. All right, next one is this button here. There we go. So this baton here has a fitting on the end. You can see it has a hinge. And that hinge bit's got to go in there like so. Hold it down flat and click it around. It's like an over center cam. This one's got a hinge a little bit different. Where you squeeze these, you can see it's a little monkey grip clip arrangement here, it's going to look like this, goes like that. And what we're doing is squeezing it so it lifts that hook out and clips it. Then we clip this into the trailing edge. You can see this is like a little skid protector on the it's had a little bit of punishment there. But this piece of end of the baton goes in in under that material in there in, in that little sandwich pocket and then you just go like that. Squeeze, hinge, insert, lever over. Squeeze, hinge, insert, lever over. All the same. You see it makes very streamlined aerodynamic fitting. This one's a little bit, here we go.
can see it's far more efficient to put these battens in in one smooth push there's not much effort required at all it's just very gentle once again so the over center lever we'll just get that one in on the sail like so oops it's a little bit problematic this one there we go you can see that pin there comes up through the eyelet just nicely clicks in nice and straight remember the dive stick again it's on the bungee there and once you get it roughly in the right position it zaps in all by itself and you can just test that it's secure while you're giving that a bit of a tap squeeze hinge insert and then engage so these little hinges on the battens they're adjustable in length this one feels a little bit tight and so once I've done them all I'll just go along and check that they're all consistent if it's a bit tight they're just on a it's got a thread in here so if I was to turn it this way it increases it puts the little batten end in further one millimeter per turn so in that way you can tune the individual batten tensions on the glider and therefore tune the glider to fly straight or if you do them do the turn them accidentally from time to time when you're setting up and packing up your glider you would tune your glider not to fly straight <laughs> which is a um, a common accidental action and so now that you know you can avoid detuning your glider all right now we've got the glider set up mostly here all the battens are in I'm going to go around the front now I'm going to lift the nose up and engage the A-frame so just before I lift the nose up we've got a, a batten here it's called a nose batten let's add the nose so it's pretty, it follows pretty cleanly what to do and it's got a little handle on here this handle use that handle to pull the batten onto that pin pretty simple if you, do, if you fail to do that it's not a big drama anyway this particular model of floater glider flies quite all right even if that batten's floating off the pin not even secured properly but anyway whilst you're here you may as well put it in properly to start with all right next step I'm going to lift up the glider and I'm going to have a five and a half thousand dollar grip on the glider because with this wind it can potentially fly away if I don't hang on to it so I'm going to lift up the glider fairly swiftly maintain a fairly consistent angle of attack that is the angle of the wing meets the airflow so I can swing the A-frame into place and clip the A-frame into place this thing here called the nose nappy I'll fit that straight afterwards so here we go lifting the sail up you can see how I've, st I've stood on the nose wires there that's so I can push the glider back and the A-frame flicks up into place now I can just grab the nose wires like that and hanging onto the ring only should be able to just clip them in there some people hang onto the wires if you hang onto the wires it shortens the effective length to the ring and therefore you struggle to clip it in so you must hang on only to the ring and it clips straight in as you've seen and so now that I'm here I can start my pre-flight check I can have a look down the keel make sure that's straight you can have a look down the leading edge down the back of the leading edge from just under there you can see it just in there and you can see there's no dints or bends on the leading edge either side yep that's good our nuts and bolts here are done up the clip is in the nose batten's in so I may as well put the nose nappy on now if you fail to put the nose nappy on a glider that has a nose nappy 
it can be dire consequences for the aerodynamic properties of the glider when you start getting enough airspeed. So you can see the nose nappy just basically seals that area up the front, covers it all in. A little bit less drag, aerodynamic uh, drag. But what I'm going to do is now continue with the pre-flight check. I'll get Grant to hold his glider there. Thanks Grant. I'm going to check that the hang loops are in the correct position and it's got a little label on this on here actually if you come around this side you'll see there's a little yellow sticker this applies to the F2 and it says the main hang loop which is the short one should be to the rear of this line here yep and there's a fun 190 and there's the F2 190 sticker yep. so they have a main and a back up and they're secure they can't slide backwards or forwards you can see it's got a friction tape arrangement here and it's got velcro on these that grabs them onto the A-frame so they're secure if you're wondering what these little ropes are this is for a car tow support attachment which is incidentally way too thin this piece of rope isn't adequate for the job so and it should be taken away this one's for an aero tow loop which is as you can see it's about halfway between the nose plate and the hang loop you can see hand span there it's right where my head is that's about the right position for it and it's a reasonably strong enough bit of rope this is a spectra a sheath spectra line so it's strong enough this one's just a bit of venetian blind cord this one's not strong enough okay we've got i'm checking the nuts the bolt through here this one's called the heart bolt uh, and it's the heart of the operations all the the loads from the flying loads come up the uprights into this bolt it's a an 5 bolt it's quite a uh, uh yeah it's quite a sturdy bolt but it must be in good order and the null lock must be done up Next thing, I'll just run the hands down the uprights. No dints or bends. There should be uh, no kinks or frays. The swages should be in good order. This one, this swage here, looking a little bit sort of slightly, slightly corroded, but no major drama. This wire here has is, is likely to experience sometimes a bit of contact with the ground when it depends on where you're setting up and how you're setting it up and so you run your finger along here looking for loose strands on the wire and this one's a, these ones are pl a plastic coated so you won't find any loose strands on there here's a little bit of plastic damage on this one just the outer skin of the plastics damaged there's no loose strands of cable in there Around here again, no kinks or frays. Sometimes these get tangled around and get kinked. And the bolt's done up there. Sail security strap is in. Okay, so we've put our pit pin in, that's good. All the other pins are secure as well, that's good. This one is also secure and on this side and all the wires are good. In in good order around the base. Those wires are good. Now I'm going to run my hand along the leading edge to here. Make sure I'll unzip this and have a look. You'll see that there's three bolts in here. They should all have a couple of threads past the nylocks. There's at least one thread, and that one's got one and a half threads. It's got several threads past the nylock nut. That's all good. This guy's got a bit of Velcro on here. It's probably for a camera attachment point or something like that. Another bit of Velcro here. That's for. That's what the previous owner has done with the glider. I'm going to zip that back up. I'm going to run my hand now along the sideway. This wire here takes most of the major loads in flight. And you can see a little spot here. It's just got a little slightly rusty spot. And that's from usually from bugs. When the bugs hit there and they splatter on it, they leave a little bit of corrosive juice on there. And after some years, those corrosive patches 
will require replacement of the wire. And these are the sort of things in a hang glider you've got to replace every couple of years, especially if you're flying the coast. This main side wire, main structural component of the entire glider. This takes all the flying loads. Okay, we had a look at the uh, crossbar here on the way in. And we've all, we should also, while we're here, check that the ball joint in here has got no rocks or grass or sticks or anything jammed in there. And you can see it's a nice, neat ball and socket. That's how it should be. So once again, feeling the leading edge, making sure there's no dints or bends on the leading edge. I get to the wing tip and I have a look down inside the wing tip and you can see down in there, you can see there's no dints, no bends, a slight bowing of the sail because there's the leading edge is like a bow in a bow and arrow, it holds tension on the sail. You can see this strap here, this nice white strap is in its slot, there's a slot in this plastic here, it sits in there. It's secured with its Velcro. Your dive stick is installed correctly. If it's not installed correctly, you'll see this on the dive stick. You'll see, you can see a ring around the dive stick here. Hang on a second, let's pull it out a little bit. It's got a little bit of sand and stuff in there. Oh, that's a little bit tight. You just let the nose up a bit there, Grant. Thanks. Add a bit of sand in there. But yeah, if the, if the dive stick isn't installed correctly, you'll see from the end there, Tusha, you'll just, you'll see that ring there. And you just have to lift the sail up a bit, give it a tap, and it goes zapping in. You can see that, now you can't see that ring, that wear ring. Yep. Our battens are installed correctly. That one's good, they're all good. Sometimes if they get a bit of a knock while you're getting ready to launch, you might see one like this. That's a flag to say, you know, pick me. It's putting its hand up, say, look at me. I need to be clicked in correctly. These are all good. This is all good. That's the ring that we installed there before. Nice and tight and neat. These are all good. Oh, there's no... See the, this main wire here? It is possible if you twist them up, it'll change... And when, before you click it in, you'll change the, how far you pull the crossbar back. So it'll change the way the glider behaves. So make sure that's nice and tangle free. That's looking good. That's looking good. You can see the luff lines are nice and clean and free. On the model before this, they used to have bungees, a bit of batten sticking out here and a bungee holding on the, on the batten. And sometimes these luff lines could get caught around the back of the batten. But on this model, to fix those problems up. It's much cleaner, much easier to use, much easier to pre-flight, no tangle problems. Let's make sure that dive stick is installed. Give it a bit of a tap, that's good. We'll have a look down here, no dints, no bends. There's a, there's a spot of dirt or grass or something back in there. I'll have a look at that at the crossbar junction shortly. I can just see one spot that's bit different to the other side. You see a little black dot up there. The strap here is in the slot. That's, that's correct. And this is just like a little handle strap for re-engaging that. No dints. If you run your hand along the front of the leading edge and you've just loaned your glider to someone and you see a big chunk of dirt on the leading edge on the outside, I'd be having a very careful feel behind that to see if it hasn't got a dint in it or something, see if your mate's landed on a rock. But this one's got a little bit of a mark here, but no dint, so that's all good. And I said earlier I was going to have a look and see what's going on in here, see what the little black thing is. And it's got a bit of um, like a bit of, like this stuff, sticky back Velcro on the other side. And that's just a cover to prevent the bolt, the head of the bolt, rubbing on the sail so that's correct it's just moved a little bit throughout the heat and setting up and packing up process yep nuts and bolts are all good you can see the threads coming out past the nuts and the bolts a couple of threads a one and a half thread on that one that's all good side wire make sure there's no frays on the side wire a few spots rusty spots there again you can feel them when you run your hands along but there's no kinks no frays once again rusty spots 
back down to there and I'll come back up again this crossbar looks good from here yep and I'll feel the leading edge along and now we've come back to where I started from that's the pre-flight check done so we checked all the nuts and bolts done up there should be no kinks or frays on any of the wires and the sail should be free from tears or major damage it's pre-flight done I put the harness in now so this is called an apron harness looks a little bit like a barbecuing apron it's made quite strong this apron harness like all hang gliding harnesses should be manufactured uh, in such a, a way that it affords about a 20 G loads so 20 times the pilot weight should be able to be put into the harness without any damage or malfunction of the harness you can see all these seat belt webbings there that's two and a half ton strap one each side it's five ton capacity there you can see the seat belt webbing goes around the pilot and around the leg loops around it over the shoulders it's all interconnected so it holds those extreme loads it's not like we're going to experience extreme loads during normal flight but if you're ever to deploy a parachute you may experience loads of up to 15 G's I'll take the stirrup off because that's only going to get in the way for this training hill exercise we're about to undertake. You can see this is a what we call a finger trap retaining system. A little ski rope. You hold on one side, you pull through the other side. But if you if you have this rope inside, cinched inside, you can pull as hard as you like on that. It doesn't come undone but it's easy to adjust as well so I've put the I've installed the harness into the main and the backup you can see the main is the short one that takes all the loads in flight the main should nearly always be in front of the backup so when you change your weight position no tension comes onto the backup the backups there is there as part of the certification process for hang gliders if you were to have the backup just as tight as the main I'll show you the problems you could move your weight back which would then put load onto the backup or if you move your weight forwards it goes vice versa so it's counterproductive to your weight shift inputs that's why you have to have the backup to the rear and also more slack and it needs to be like 30 or 40 mil does the job all right so in hang gliding we in Australia we teach that you insert the harness into the glider either pre pre-flight or during the pre-flight or just after the pre-flight and then the pilot climbs into the cockpit to launch that's called the Australian way that prevents us taking off without being clipped in all right that's about it